Afternoon. The music you've just heard was called Waltz in Orbit. On the label of the record, where you usually find the composer's name, I see the words BBC Radiophonics. Now, this is a subject we've dealt with before in the sound program over the years. Most serious recording amateurs, I think, have some good idea of the BBC work in this field. Many of them, as I know from judging entries in the so called technical experiment class in the British and International Recording Contests, have done their best to emulate some of the work of the BBC team. We thought it was a good idea to record this edition of sound at the Radiophonic Workshop at the Maidervale Studios. Let me introduce Desmond Briscoe, the man who knows all about this side of the BBC's activity. Uh, Desmond, I like that waltz in orbit tune, but the Radiophonic Workshop doesn't exist simply to produce pop music, does it? No, no, that was really just a bit of fun, a byproduct. No, the workshop was originally formed to help with very serious productions. Wasn't it regarded as rather third programme stuff at any rate at the beginning? Yes, experimental plays and features, that sort of thing. But very soon, as we discovered new ways of producing and manipulating sound electronically, we found we were in demand for all sorts of shows, both sound and television. Special effects, incidental music, and so on. And of course, inevitably, for science fiction. Oh yes, of course. Remember this sort of thing, a typical sound which we supplied for the famous TV serial Quatermass and the Pit. I think the most useful thing from the point of view of listeners to this programme would be for you to give us some more examples like that, the types of sound you've produced at different times in the radiophonic workshop. Well now, here's an example of something different. We were asked for a theme for a play about some men adrift in an open boat, something to depict the loneliness, the space and the movement of the boat. This is what we did. succeeded there all right. I almost feel seasick. <laughs> well, thinking of stomachs, do you remember the goon show and our idea of Major Bloodnock's stomach? <laughs> Now, I said a little while ago that a lot of listeners to this program know something about this sort of almost magical manipulation of sound. But I know this too, that a lot of people with tape recorders in their homes haven't had the courage to try this sort of thing. Many of them haven't, in fact, got around to cutting the tape to do simple editing. I'd like us to give some encouragement to these people, if we can, to try to tempt them to build up sounds in the way in which you do in the radiophonic workshop. Very few of them are likely to achieve the same standards, of course, but most people can have a lot of fun seeing what they can do, don't you agree? Yes, certainly. Well, to put it simply, all the effects and music we produce in the Radiophonic Workshop are made by manipulating sounds, electronic sounds and ordinary everyday sounds. Let's take the electronic ones first. Here's an example of pure electronic sound, a sign tone. <laughs> Then there are square waves with a sort of reed-like tone. These were used for the melody in Waltz in Orbit.
and there's this sound, rather like escaping steam. We call that white noise. Actually, it contains all notes or frequencies, rather like white light contains all the colors of the rainbow. If we take some of the frequencies away with a filter, then we get what is known as pink noise. We're going now. There. And, of course, there are various electronically produced musical sounds. Here's an example. A familiar sound from an electronic organ. Less recognizable, but from the same organ. And here's a guitar with the notes picked up electrically. As well as the electronic sounds, we can use ordinary musical instruments and any of the natural sounds of everyday life. Once they've been recorded, there's no limit to what you can do by manipulation. Right, now we've talked about the way we collect the original sounds. Let's elaborate a little what we mean when we refer to manipulating them. You can use filters, can't you, to control the range of frequencies. You can change pitch by changing the tape speed. You can add reverberation, you can cut the tape in the middle of notes, or you can play them backwards, you can make tape loops, and so on. Now, can you tell us something more about all this? Certainly. Let's record my voice as I'm speaking to you now, and put it through a filter. The high frequencies can be removed. This can be done with any sound except a pure tone. You can't do this with a pure tone because it only has one note or frequency. Or, of course, the low frequencies can be removed, like this, making my voice sound as though it is coming out of one of the very small loudspeakers which are fitted in the transistorized personal radios. If we remove the high and the low frequencies, then my voice will sound as though it's on a telephone or radio intercom. But if we use a special filter to take the middle out of the sound, then my voice sounds like this, with a hole in the middle. We can also change the speed of the sound. And you all know what is happening to my voice now. It is going up in pitch. And very soon, if I speak slowly, I will sound like one of the chipmunks. But if I speak at normal speed, you will find it very hard to understand what I say. But if I speak at normal speed, you will find it very hard to understand what I say. But if I speak at normal speed, you will find it very hard to understand what I say, unless we slow down the tape. Again. And, of course, as we keep on slowing it down, my voice will get slower and deeper and deeper. And deeper, and deeper, and deeper, and deeper, and deeper, and deeper, and deeper. Or, of course, we can make the tape machine repeat the last word that I say. I say, 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 I say. If we use two tape machines, we can include more than one word and have the repeats delayed. 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 The obvious thing we can do with any sound, or with my voice, is to reverse it, making an immediate translation into Martian. These treatments can be applied to any of the sounds that we made earlier and also various studio effects such as echo or to be more accurate reverberation can be added this reverberation we can make very bassy and low and boomy by taking the high frequencies away or we can make it very bright and toppy by taking the low frequencies away like this well we've run through the catalogue of these various tricks of course, you can apply not only any one of them to a particular sound, but the whole lot if you want to. Can you give us an example of a case where you've given the sound the full treatment? All right. Listen to this. What does it sound like to you? Because it's slow, it's very, very low. But if we play it faster, 
it'll sound like this. Let's double the speed again. You will notice, of course, that each time we double the speed of the sound, it's an octave higher in pitch. Listen again, it's getting nearer to normal speed and normal pitch. Is it becoming recognisable? Yes, a bottle breaking. If we don't hit our bottle quite so hard, it'll sound like this. Now that gave us an idea, so we sent out for some more bottles, and here they are. If we play on these, it sounds like this. Now, we thought we could use that to make a rhythm. It's not very interesting as it is, but if we select just some of these sounds and make a loop of the tape, it sounds like this. We can, of course, double the speed of this. Now we can start to use our filters. Let's remove all the high frequencies. But of course we're going to lose some of the volume, so we have to turn things up a bit, and you'll hear the hiss of the tape and the amplifier come up. Or, of course, we can remove all the low frequencies. And now we can get a tape machine to add some repeats of the notes in the middle of these phrases. Now, we've got two loops. And if we take them, the high one and the low one, with their various repeated notes, and run them together, at first they sound like this. Gradually, we get the two loops into step, in fact, synchronised. And now we have a rhythm which is becoming interesting and useful. Well, we have a sound we can use, but it needs modifying. It perhaps needs to be a little more mellow. So, while playing it, we filter it a little until it sounds right. We could ask the echo room to collaborate. Or, of course, we could ask musicians to collaborate. And, in fact, Malcolm Mitchell has written a tune inspired by this rhythm. And he and the trio have recorded it with the tape.